Hi, folks. We're back. Hi, everybody. Jimmy. Um, nice to see everyone. Larry, I have to remind people that when, whatever you do like uh, what you're seeing by Larry's show, uh, always hit like, uh, subscribe, and any comments, any questions, and tell your friends. Back to you, Larry. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of comments lately and a lot of questions, which is good because it helps me remember. And uh, I, I, I I answer almost all of them. Uh, there's one or two that, um, in fact, I have them here, um, uh, that are pretty heavyweight questions. And uh, I, I, I may get to them in this podcast, but the first story I want to... I, w I want to talk about is we're going to be jumping around a bit because in the beginning this podcast was only supposed to be three or four podcasts leading right into the TV series which now is on hold because of the writer's strike so um, because of that we're going to continue and continue and continue and uh, uh, I'm going to have to jump around a lot because um, in the beginning I just went straight ahead and and any story I tell branches out just for that one day into 15 other stories. So I'm going to be going back and forth, back and forth. I, um, and and this, this story is, um, this story uh, takes place um, many, many years later. I got a call from James Gandolfini uh, from uh, The Sopranos. And he says to me, he says, um, uh, my, I take my father every place with me, and uh, the last two weeks, he's, he just he has no interest in going. He stopped talking. He stopped eating, and uh, I don't I don't know what to do. Um, and and I don't want to put him in a home. I I I, I just love him to death, and and I need him with me. Uh, but he's not responding anymore. But I know he loves horses. Are you talking about Junior or Senior Gandolfini? See, the guy that's in The Sopranos, and he's talking about his father, Senior. Okay, because Senior passed away. Senior passed away after this story. Okay. Um, a lot of you, uh, before I go on with that, I, I, I have to say this, because I get about 30 questions a week saying, why is Jimmy there if you never let him speak? <laughs> and it's a, it's, a, it's a good question, and the reason is, I, 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 I tell him that um, because of my age and, and I, I just forget a lot. And whenever wow. he interrupts me, even if it's for a second, I forget where I was. And that's why you see me a lot of times just pausing, trying to remember where I was 10 seconds ago. And that's what happens when you get old. Everything starts to happen. So anyway, uh, he calls me up and he says, my father's in real bad shape. He won't talk, but the, 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 I, I tried everything. I, he won't take medication. He won't go to any. So he says, but he loves horses. And uh, can I bring him to the barn? And I said, sure. And sure enough, the next day, um, a, a Porsche Cayenne pulls up uh, and the, the, the whole back of the truck opened up and, and um, his handlers brought him down in, in, a, in a wheelchair. And um, he comes out, and he's just probably 80 pounds, a very, very frail guy. He must have been probably 85, something like that. I don't know. And he had his head, his chin in his chest, and his head was down, and nothing, he didn't respond to anything. And I said, I walked over to him, and I said, hello, Mr. Gandolfini. He, I said, my name is Larry. No response. So I, I told the kid that worked for me, I says, do me a favor, go, go and get the osmosis. Osmosis was a horse I had that um, a, f a friend of mine, uh, his wife owned him, and she fell in love with him. He was a beautiful, beautiful black horse, but all he wanted to do was be petted and fed carrots and apples, and, and he didn't want to race. He was a terrible racehorse. He never won a race in his life. But every week I would ship him up to Monticello where my friend lived and uh, she would see him in the receiving barn and bring him carrots and everything else. And then he'd race, finish last, and then he would ship back. And that was the routine. And, uh, so, and, and all he wanted to do was be petted and fed apples. So I, uh, the groom brings him out. And I get the horse's head and I put, him, I put the horse's nose right into his, his lap. 
and within within seconds he lifted his head a little bit and he saw it was the horse's head right there and then he lifted his head and he started petting the horse on the on the on the top of the head and um and and I says um you like that horse and and he said yeah and I said his name is Osmosis and he says Os Osmosis I says listen I says we're gonna train. We have to train him today. Would you, would you want to help me with him? He says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's sitting up erect and and uh, he's starting to pay attention. Yeah, he's starting to be spry now. Starting yeah, to... he's starting to a little smile on his face and right. and it was, it was, it was nice to see. In the meantime, all the handlers that he had with him were snapping pictures and 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 it was nice. So anyway. Um, we pick him up and we see, it's, I tell the groom, go harness the horse up. And he harnesses him up, he brings him out, he says, hook him up to the jaw cart. He hooks him up to the jaw cart, and I, and I said, okay, I said, are you ready? And he says, yeah. I says, okay, now we're not going to go too fast with him, we're just going to go from here to the end of the barn, and um, and and um, uh, that, that'll, that'll be it, we'll do that two or three times, and, and then uh, we'll stop. And he says, okay. So we put him on the jaw cart, and um, I says, now listen, I think we should, you should wear a helmet, you know. And he says, okay. I says, now do you want a whip? He says, okay. <laughs> so he's sitting there, and I says, okay. Now the groom has the horse by the head. He's all harnessed the up. The password is okay. And, uh, well, yeah. so, so, so um, he... I put the lines in his hands, and I says, okay, now put your hands in the hand holes here, I says, and uh, just keep a steady hold of them, and, uh, and we'll be okay. He says, okay. So we walk him up and down, maybe 50 feet to the end of the barn, and then back and back and back, and after three or four times, I could see that he's starting to get a little tired. Well, osmosis was good therapy so, for him. So, so. No, the, it was the other way around. Osmosis, all he, he, he was, he was a pet. He he should have been in a petting zoo. Osmosis, not on a racetrack. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I tell the groom, okay, that's enough. I says he's done training. I says, boy, you did a good job. And he says, oh yeah. He says, uh, nice osmosis. So he says to me, he says, when is he going to race? And uh, I, I said, no. I says he's not going to race. We're getting him ready to race. And and the groom says. No, he's in for Friday. And I didn't want him to know that because he, he said exactly what I knew he was going to say. He says, well, I, I want to watch him. I, I got to watch him. Oh. And I says, oh, my God. I said, I said to myself, this horse finishes last every week. He's still a maid, never won a race in his life. And uh, now this this poor guy wants so to watch he, him he race. He was clocked with a calendar instead of a stopwatch, so, right? So it... Yeah, very good, Jimmy. Very good. <laughs> so you, uh, uh, I, I, I tell, I, I say, no, no. I says that he's wrong. He's, he's, uh, and and the groom, not knowing, he just no. I got the sheet in my pocket because they draw for positions three days ahead, and they had the the, the sheet. So he says, yeah, he's in for Friday in the third race. And uh, I says, okay. He says, oh, good. I, I says, yeah, oh, that's right. He's in the go. I says, but you can't go see him because he's racing in Monticello, not here. He, I says, in Monticello is 100 miles away. I says, uh, he says, no, that's all. He says, my Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy will take me here for simulcasting. He knew the whole routine. Wow. <laughs> so I says, oh, my God. So I says, all right. So I get a hold of the guy. I tell Jimmy, I says, yeah, look, uh, he says so he's going to finish last. He, he raced 30 times or he finishes last every week. He's just a, a pet. And not only that, but I got the leading driver up there. Uh, um, and and, and as, as a favor to me, he, he just takes him around the track. Um, so Billy Parker was the driver. He's the leading, leading driver up at Monticello for 20 years. And as a favor to me, because we need to go back a long time, he uh, he, he drove me. Just take her on the track. So now, I says, Jimmy, I says, I, he, you can't let him watch this race. He's going to be disappointed. He's going to finish last. 
He says, how am I going to stop him? He wants, I have to take him. He says, he's, he's livening up. It's like a new, new guy. I got my, my father back. So uh, I said, okay. So Friday morning, the horse ships up. I take my car. I drive up there. I get a hold of Billy Parker, who's driving him every week. He drove him every week, finished last every week. So I says, Billy, I tell him the whole story. I says, you watch The Sopranos? He says, yeah, I love it, my favorite show. I says, well, the star of Sopranos, Gandolfini, this is his father. And I told him the whole story. I says, so the bottom line is this horse has to win. And Jimmy's words to me, well, what are you, fucking nuts? Then were his words to me. And I says, no, I'm, I'm not, he has to win. I says, and Gandolfini told me that he'll give you the whole series of Sopranos, You'll get everything. You'll get a signed color, signed picture. You'll get everything. This horse has to win. He says, Larry, he says, it's hard. I says, listen, years ago, we did whatever we had to do to win. So choreograph the race. Do whatever you have to do. This horse has to win. And I says, and that's it. And I leave the paddock. Now, I leave the paddock and I go to the track photographer, the guy that takes the winner's circle picture and, and picture right at the wire. And I said, listen, if this horse is in contention uh, it, it, from the head of the stretch home, just keep snapping pictures because I want to get the best picture as, as a gift for a friend of mine. So sure enough, head of the stretch, they're head and head, head and head and head. And head. The bottom line is he wins. And uh, okay. And um, so I go back to the photographer, and uh, he has the picture, and I pick out a picture of him halfway down the stretch just before the wire with him clearly in front. And, uh, and on the picture, I believe it says I put on the top, I made him put because they do it on the computer, a special thanks to Mr. James Gandolfini Sr. Without his help, this one wouldn't be possible. And I had bet a $100 win ticket, and, uh, and then on the bottom, it has the name of the race, the name of the horse, the trainer, the driver, and all of that. And, uh, and um, I had the picture blown up and, and framed. And um, Did you give him the win ticket as a gift? I put the win ticket in the, in the, in the, um, in the frame. When, okay. When I had the picture Very nice. framed. It was one of them seal wrap things, so it couldn't distort. And I, and I had it framed professionally. I think it cost $400 just for the frame that wow. I had put in. And because they, they do something when they suck the air out or something. I don't know what they do. Anyway, I said, whatever the best way is, that's the way. So, um, and I put the wind ticket in, in the, in, the, in, the, in the frame. And I shipped it off to him. And um, I think it was the end of the week we were going to Florida. So I go to Florida and um, I come back. And these messages to me all over the place to go see uh, Gandolfini at the the Satin Dolls and the show they called it the Bada Bean Club. It's right down on yeah, Seventeen. Yeah, it's on Seventeen. Yeah. Right. So I, I go down there and uh, he thanks me and everything. What I didn't know was while I was away, the father died. He died about six months later. But Jimmy says that uh, uh, that was the best he ever was. He perked up and he just died of natural causes. But he was happy right to the end. And like and you I, made him. You made him feel alive again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, it's 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 a nice feeling. It's 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 not describable. The the feeling you get when when you can help some somebody like that, and uh, it, it was nice. It was sad that he died, but they told me that, and I don't know this for sure because I I wasn't there and I didn't see it. Uh, that the picture he had in his office on the in the Bada Bing Club, he had an office, you know, in the Sopranos. Right. And he had a thoroughbred that I think he used to. I never used to watch The Sopranos. I, 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 I couldn't watch it. And um, they, they uh, he owned a thoroughbred horse, and uh, he, they said that he took that thoroughbred picture down and put this picture. Put that up. in place of right. Yeah, and 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 during the um, during the funeral, the wake, they had all them pictures that they snapped all around his. Uh, all around his his the, the casket and everything, which which was really nice. And then and then uh, Jimmy uh, Gandolfini, he, I stayed with him for the whole day, and um, we took pictures and and lunch and the whole bit. And he thanked me and thanked me and thanked me. And then he said that his next year, if it was all right, he'd bring his son there. His son, I think, was ten years old at the time. 
the kid now that was starring in one of these series, I don't know. So um, uh, that was the Gandolfini story that my friend wanted me to want, wanted me to uh, uh, tell you. Um, and and um, I think now, I think now I have to get this off my chest because I, I got this question. I got this question a couple of weeks ago, and I never answered it. Normally, I answer all the questions right on the computer, and they taught me how to do that, and I stay up all night answering all these questions. But this question, I have four or five of them here, but I'm, t I, I'm just going to address one of them because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good question, and, and one that I, I think a lot of people would want to know, and and the reason why it hit me. Because he he wrote here's the question: How are you blaming other people for your father's having to leave the racetrack and eventually die? If it's you, your gambling was the problem. Now he put you in capital letters, like like I was the one that caused my father's death because of my gambling problem. The question is all mixed up. That wasn't correct. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good question. It, it's, it's, I think it's a good question because if it wasn't a good question, I, I, I would say it, but there got to be a lot of people out there that um, are, are, wondering, are wondering the same thing. And, and I just didn't want to... Your mom wanna... didn't want him there. Yeah, but that, that's, that, that's, part, that's part of the story. My, my, I, I went to my mother when I was in trouble. I asked I needed money. Tony wasn't calling me. Nobody was calling me, and I was in serious trouble. and And it was it was face Cabert. Barney Cutler. I had Gina was getting very friendly with Barney. She was bringing him a coffee, cooking for him, and everything. So they were developing a friendship where I could slide a little bit over there. But Cabert, there was no sliding. He, he's just just a madman, a mad. So I, I was worried about that. And Bert's the kind of guy that go to your house and burn it down and, and kill, kill it. He's just a, he's just a whack job. Well, you know that. You, 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 <laughs> I can you verify know, that. You know that. So anyway, uh, when when I went to my mother, she says, "Okay." She says, "I will I will give you whatever I have. I have my life insurance policy, your father's life insurance policy. I have a mutual fund that uh, Mr. Lucchese bought for me and you." I will cash all of that in and give you the give you whatever money I get from that, which was maybe thirty, forty thousand. And I said, she says, under one condition, you tell your father that he has to go back to work because my father stayed with me every minute of every day. He went to work maybe one day a week just to have enough money for gas money to go wherever I was going. But he was he was very very he I I think he just adored me. He just. He just loved that I was where I was and, and doing something good because... Well, that's a beautiful the, the, relationship with it, father it, and son. It, 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 tur it, turned out to be, it turned out to be that because for the first 15, 16 years, all he did was stop my mother from beating me to death, you know, and he just, he just always supported me. So she says to me, I'll give you all this money you got to make me a promise. You tell your father that he can't go to the track no more with you. From morning till night, he has to go to work. I need help. So that's what I did. And when, when I did that, uh, he, he, was, he was heartbroken. And, and I made an excuse that the security, track security, that was checking up. It, it was all a lie. But when you're jammed up and you get in as much trouble as I was in, you do things that you that after the fact you want to punch yourself in the face for doing, and you would never do it under normal circumstances. But I did it, and and he stayed. He never went back to work. He stayed in the house on the chair for seven days and seven nights, and died. They couldn't find the cause of death. To me, he died of a broken heart. Okay, so that's the story about. What this guy is saying, this guy Max. Yes, and continuing Max to answer Albert, that question. A L B U R G. So now he says, "How are you blaming other people for your father being off the racetrack and eventually dying?" So, if you just listen to what I said and listen to that question, a lot of people out there that only know that 
uh, would say, well, well, the guy's right. If you weren't gambling and you, get, you didn't get yourself jammed up, um, none of this would have happened. So I have a tendency of rolling on, running on, on and on and on. So I have to write. When things are important enough to me, I have to write them down because I, I veer off in all different directions. And sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. And this, this was important enough for me to let people know. And, and maybe I'm wrong. And what I wrote down what I think. And maybe I'm wrong. And the people out there can make their own decisions. So I wrote down my answer to him. And, he, and here it is. And after I get done, then this guy, Max, can make up his own mind. Maybe he, maybe he didn't understand the whole story. And that's another thing with me. If, if I'm going to make a decision about something, I need to know both sides of the story. If you ask me a question, I don't know the other side of the story, don't ask me because I'm not going to answer it. So that, that's, that's the way I am. Okay, here's my answer to this question. The question again is, how are you blaming other people for your father having to leave the racetrack, eventually dying, and, and then he puts down, it's you in big letters, you're gambling. Okay, here's my response. First, I want to thank you for your question. It's a good one, and, and one that many people, I'm sure, would like the answer to. I'm not blaming other people for what happened to my father. I'm blaming one man, Marty Tannenbaum, the owner of Yonkers Raceway. At the age of 17, I paid the price f for the crimes I committed, and because of Tommy uh, Three Finger Brown Lucchese, the boss of the Lucchese crime family, one of the five families that dominated organized crime in, in New York City, I turned my life around. It was because of that man that I went from bad to good. Someone, the government considered a bad guy, turned, turned me from a bad kid and criminal into, uh, into a, an abiding citizen. And, and because of this change and the success that followed, my mother's broken heart started to mend and my father became the proudest father in the world and wanted to be by my side whenever he could. And for five years of hard work and sacrifices, things got better for me. Then one night at Yonkers Raceway, Mon and Tannenbaum became judge and jury and accused me of something I did not do. No phone call, no explanation, no hearing, no nothing. Just an order to leave his racetrack within 24 hours. The action because of reciprocity between the racetracks barred me from all major racetracks in the country and sent me, sent all my hard work, sacrifices, success, and reputation down the drain. All this coming from one man that was what I used to be. But because of his wealth and strong political connections, he was able to be licensed by New York State Racing Commission and own a racetrack. The next three years were the toughest of my life, not because of traveling all around the country, penniless, and basically living on bran mashes, oats, and, and pigeons, but because of the total injustice, not only for me, but for my mother, whose heart started bleeding again, and my father, who loved me to death and begged for an answer that I couldn't give him. Now, at that point, some would have gotten out of the racehorse business and put all, all that stuff behind him. But here's my problem. That ain't me. I have a problem turning the other cheek, putting my tail between my legs and moving on like a mutt, especially if I'm right. And I was right. Mr. Lucchese had died during the beginning of all of this and, was, and I was on my own. And now the other side of me comes out, the side that took me back to the road I was on as a kid. And as long as... I had a license to train and drive. I did whatever I had to do to get back to where I was. Now remember, I didn't invent corruption. It was there. I just hopped aboard. Now maybe you, Max, would have handled it differently. But I am what I am. It's a terrible thing when you're accused of something you're not guilty of and you are not afforded the right to be heard. 
That man is the reason for me changing lanes and all that followed, including the death of my father. I'm sure you know the word causation. That word refers to the relationship of cause and effect between one action and the result. The one action was taken by Marty Tannenbaum and everything that was, everything after that was the effect, including my gambling, my fixing races, and my father's death. So that's all I wrote. So uh, that I hope I hope it answers that question, and, and probably, I don't know who agrees with me or who not, but um, the one that started this whole thing going was not my gambling. My gambling was the effect of what this guy did, and that was the truth. I was on my way, in my opinion, to stardom. I, I got write-ups, I got everything, and I was on my way until this creep, Tannenbaum, did what he did. And maybe I shouldn't answer that because now I'm aggravated. And uh, well, on that, I'll see note, you next week. Um, people, I just want to let you guys know that any questions you have, I want you to hit like, uh, subscribe, and any questions, any comments, and if you want to tell your friends about the broadcast, please do so. Again, thank you from Larry and I, and good night. See ya.